Lucky Shot brings you this episode of the QA. It is the end of the month, which means it is QA time. It is the April 2021 edition, and as this reaches you, I'm actually probably on the road teaching again, but I decided to film this one in my local home office before I hit the road. Last month I was, of course, on the road, and honestly, it's way easier for me to shoot and edit and everything like that when I'm here. Uh, good turnout. We have a bunch of questions. We have some comments to kind of quickly go over, and for the first time in a long time, I actually have some mail, which is, which is really cool. Uh, this one is from a student, Art. I sent a patch, which is awesome, and a uh, nice note for the class. Uh, yeah, so here's the cool thing, and he necessarily, I don't know if he's a viewer or not, but he was a bit skeptic going into, and again, the topic was RDS handgun, that's what I'm on the road teaching, but made an RDS believer out of me, which is just cool to see more and more people getting on board with the Red Dot handgun train. Uh, this letter, is from Dan, also sent a patch, which is awesome. And I don't show patches on the show. I know some agencies uh, are a little more restrictive, but I do love patches. I do have a separate wall that's off camera for viewers of LE and students and stuff like that. That does stuff, it really does mean a lot to me. But I won't read this whole letter, but Dan uh, sent a very nice letter, appreciated you know, kind of the info, and he's kind of uh, new to different parts of instructing and always looking to gather info. And he's, uh, I should say he's new to going to YouTube for info, and he uh, enjoyed some of the content. And actually, what was really cool is he's out in Ohio, and when I was out at Ohio teaching last month, we were able to connect and uh, just kind of meet face-to-face -face and kind of talk about some stuff and hang out and just uh, kind of share some experiences, and I had a great time. So that's part of the cool part of the internet and being able to go on the road and connect. So that uh, is really cool, and I appreciate the letter, appreciate the patch. And then I got my first package um, in a long time. I did receive a package uh, around Christmas time from Bob, but I don't think this is from you, Bob. This is from Miami, and I can't tell who it's from because there's no note. Uh, the return address just says Miami and it has random initials, but will you believe your eyes when you see this? Look at this. This is cool. This is awesome. So I absolutely love getting that. Whoever sent this, uh, please send me an email so I can thank you, but sincere thanks to you. I really do appreciate it. Also, we'll crack this open right now because it's time to thank Lucky Shot for sponsoring this month's episode of the QA. We'll give them a little plug later, but uh, Lucky Shot makes some really cool glassware and uh, it goes great with such a quality beverage like this. So thank you, whoever you are. I also got to give a shout out to Jim. Jim is a local uh, viewer, and he did bring over some pineapple beverages. And I have to say, Jim, I tried the off-brand. I can't remember what brand it was. And uh, Pineapple Fanta is still better. So thanks for the two liters of Pineapple Fanta. I save those for, like, family occasions. A couple quick comments on the last month's QA, then we'll get into the questions. Lake Erie, the septic tank of the Great Lakes. I don't know if it is or not. That's kind of funny. Uh, Jackson Hammersmith, I'd like to see an update on your Sweet 16 rifle with the 13.9 inch barrel. Does your dead air can fit without shims or shaving the handguard? So actually, uh, I believe a viewer slash customer sent in his upper for assembly and handguard to be machined to match the Sweet 16. And as you can see, the, the MCMR usually has uh, these flares that come out and then I just basically go to the mill and I make the flares kind of even with the bottom so you can kind of see the cut there. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can see that. And unfortunately, I don't have my close-up camera on because I don't use that for the QA, but you can see that I basically just take an end mill, the milling machine, and machine this so it is relatively uh, flush there. And then that allows the dead air on a 13.9 inch barrel uh, to protrude enough the muzzle device so a can can attach, like in my Sweet 16 video. You can check out the Sweet 16 video right up there. Great rifle, love it, still going strong. Uh, but it is added to the list to kind of maybe do a check-in with that. So I'll try to get to that maybe this uh, late spring, summer, because I have some other cool stuff coming up that I'm personally excited about. All right, uh, a couple of really nice comments. Thanks for the shout-out, stuff like that. Um, kind of some comments. Uh, this one is from John. John, uh, it's nice to see that I'm running the National Circuit for RDS instructor classes. It'd be cool to hear about your experiences as a traveling instructor. What is it like? I was one of the first that he saw to use the 509. Uh, are there many students out there with it? What are they liking about it? And the police instructors make fun of you, RMR or nothing. Unfortunately, a lot of the police instructors don't know what they don't know. I'm 
finding that when I'm traveling a little bit. Uh, I'm, and I'm not a huge instructor. There are instructors that are traveling and they're bigger and cooler than me as far as like their popularity and their reach and their amount of classes. I'm a relatively small fish in the instructor pond. I'm just happy to be in the pond sharing my knowledge. But uh, the 509 has been great. Uh, I actually, the one that I did my first look video on, which you can check out on the card up there, uh, I did have to send back because that was a pre-production sample like I mentioned in that. But I did get a couple of uh, replacements. One I bought on my own and one I was nice enough to receive. I have not reinstalled it yet. I'm actually heading out to a class. This is coming with me because I have to install it and zero it. But I love these 509s. They're a great optic. They work super good. And if you haven't watched the state of the red dot, I'm going to put it up there because one of the questions that we got refers to this. So if you're watching this, you want to learn more about red dots, watch the state of the red dot. Just my opinion on where we are with handgun red dots. I did that video a couple weeks ago or whatever. Uh, now, what do I think about my experiences traveling as an instructor? I, I hate traveling. I can't tell you I can't tell you how unlucky I am. I've had a rental car breakdown in the middle of nowhere. I uh, missed a flight. Uh, I had, I feel like there's one other thing uh, that I can't think of right now, whether it was a hotel thing or something like that. Uh, it's just travel is not, I, I do not get lucky when it comes to travel. So traveling is like the worst part about being a traveling instructor. Uh, I'm gone for five days to teach a three-day class. So that is just kind of a, a sacrifice. And like I said, travel generally doesn't always go smooth for me, but I love it when I get there. I love being able to teach and share knowledge and interact with students. Uh, I really do enjoy that. Maybe I can do another video about what it's like or, you know, lessons learned, you know, things I've bought, chargers and padlocks for cases and flying with stuff. Traveling, you know, lighter. I've had to pack lighter. Seriously, thank you again to whoever sent the Phantom. I always love it. But yeah, that might be, you know, maybe another video topic uh, around the campfire or something like that. Let's get to the questions. We have a bunch. So I'm going to kind of go quick. Before we get into the questions, because believe me, there's a bunch and I got to go kind of quick. The best way to get your question on the show is to email us. The email address is shown below. That is the Q&A at gunsandtactics.com. And we would love to get your question. The best way is to email that goes into my inbox and I do my best to get it updated. Occasionally I do miss an email. I'm not perfect, okay? I'm not a robot. So I apologize if I do. Please send me a reminder. We'll make sure we get on the next show because I want to have you get a chance to win, of course, the prize from Lucky Shot. But I also want to share that information. So please, please, please email. Email address down below. Let's get right to our questions because believe me, we've got a bunch. So I'm going to probably go a little fast because some of you are starting to ask like multiple questions, which is great, but we want to make sure we cover everything. Number one. <clears throat> Uh, this is from Kevin. Thanks for the show. What things can be done to solve the problems with incorrect and uncontrolled torque values for the screws to hold that? And what can be done to help people use the proper Loctite? Uh, just for fun, I also did a Loctite 101 video. You can find that right up there. That kind of goes through stuff. Truth be told, I'm starting to transition more and more to VC3, which is just a great all-around thread locking compound. It's reusable, so if you have to do something in the field, you remove a screw, you can put it back on. They say about four to six uses. You can reuse that thread locker. Some screws from different factories are coming with that pre-applied or an OEM function of it pre-applied. So I am starting to use VC3 a lot more, but I still do like purple uh, 222 or I think they also have a 223 version, uh, but it is their small fastener size. Again, I talk about it in that video. Uh, as far as what can be done, I try to educate. In my class, I have an armorer's portion where we talk about technical info, where we talk about what a torque wrench is, what thread locker is, the proper degreasing. And I've covered all this stuff in videos if you guys are wanting to learn more about it. But I'm a firm believer in degreasing, proper prep, thread locking compound, proper torque. That way you don't break screws and screws hold what they're supposed to hold. Literally, to date, every class I have gone to where I have taught, and other people can attest to this, every single class, something comes loose or falls off. We have RMRs come off, we've had flashlights come off, we've had sights come off, we've had sights loosen up or red dots loosen up. So every class, something falls apart, breaks, comes loose, whatever, and oftentimes it's due to torque thread locking issues, whatever. Not always, but oftentimes. Now, Vast majority of problems will be solved if they use proper that, yes, I agree. Uh, unfortunately, there's a large resistance and I don't know if it's an ego problem, you know, as far as accepting that, like you mentioned, it probably is. People don't know what they don't know and they don't want to admit that they don't know what they don't know. But we, all we can do is keep trying to educate them and hopefully educating them by, you know, real situations. Because sadly with the life, it often gives the test before the lesson. Let's get to it. This is from Derek from Monticello. Awesome. Thanks to have a Minnesota viewer. Number one, having astigmatism, wants to switch over to an LPVO, don't know which scope. 
Uh, honestly, it really depends on your budget. Uh, if you want to spend $2,000, there's great options. If you want to spend $500, there's some good options. So real quick off the top of my head, the Steiner 1-4, to the PX4 uh, is a great entry-level scope. The Trigicon Accu Power and Accu Point are both good scopes with the Accu Power. That's their battery LED version. It doesn't get quite as bright as I'd like. The Steiner does a pretty good job with that. The Accu Point is a very simple reticle, but I still like it. It's simple. It has wide field of view. It has a good exit pupil. It's just a really nice scope. As you step up into like one to sixes, you can start to look for um, vor Vortex razors. Some used razors are great optics. And then as you spend more, you could look at like Collis, you could look at uh, Swarovski's. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. I could probably do another video on that topic, but really it kind of depends on your price point. The Vortex PSD Gen 2 is okay. I've had some electrical issues with some of their models, but uh, yeah, so that'd be not bad. Uh, dropped trigger into AR, Rise Armament. I don't have any personal experience with the Rise Armament. I've heard good things. So I know they OEM for a few other companies as well. I heard the good things. I don't have a ton of experience. And then thinking about putting together a small parts kit, I actually have a video on that. Spare parts for your AR. Check it out right up there. Boom. Done. So, good deal. That was a bunch of questions, but you only get entered once. All right, this is from Art. Uh, different Art than that one. Lots of content. Love it. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be a part of a great team. Looking for a belt geared towards a shotgun and want to know if there's truly an option, but rather avoid a vest. Uh, honestly, as far as a battle belt setup, I did a video. I think I'm running out of cards, so I might have to start putting links. But if you search for belt on the channel, you can find some of our videos on belts. Uh, I believe Rex did one. I did one. And all you're going to be then doing for a shotgun is adding some sort of caddies. Now, from a tactical setup, you might be looking at adding uh, a caddy that would replace the side caddy or just a caddy that holds four rounds and you have to learn how to do weak hand loading. More of the gamers are doing twin or quad loading. However, that's not really a tactical setup because it's not really the most rugged for going in and out of stuff or whatever. You could lose shells. But I do think there is some merits to maybe a twin loading type technique. But that might be something I could try to do a video on in the future. Uh, we'll see what I can come up with with that. But I think that might not be a bad idea. But set up your belt just how you would anything else. So it should have a pistol holster, pistol mags, if you're going to carry other stuff. And then, yes, it should supplement your primary firearm, which is... If it's a shotgun, it should supplement the shotgun, but I should also have like a dump pouch, an IFAC, whatever other support items you need. But some caddies might not be bad. And I was using, um, I believe now they might even be available by Safari Land, but they were what everybody was using back in the three gun day for weak hand is they just held four rounds. I believe they also made a six model. You would grab them with your weak hand and you would just weak hand load. And with some practice, you could get pretty good at it. I remember I was at a Louis Auerbach shotgun class way back in the day and weak hand shotgun loading was the technique every three gunner was uh, using. And I remember having to reload, I was able to grab four shells, one, two, three, four, maybe a little slower than that. And all the other guys were like, wow, you load so fast. And it's like, it's just a skill that you practice and you had to be good at it in three guns. So that might be something to consider. All right, let's move on. This is from Tony. Just watched your February QA. I'm left-handed looking for an Ambi semi-auto bullpup shotgun. Is there any to consider? Honestly, I don't know of a ton of true Ambi ones. I know that the kel is a bullpup shotgun. That's probably the most popular right now, but I don't have one in front of me, so I can't tell you truthfully how Ambi it is, but... Um, and actually, that's a pump, now that I say that. I'm not even sure of a semi-auto bullpup shotgun. I might have to do some homework on this one because, unfortunately, I don't have direct first-hand experience with semi-auto bullpup shotguns. I'm not aware of one. So, viewers, if you're aware of one, please comment in the comment section below and we can help out Tony. But otherwise, the, the Caltech uh, KSG is a semi... or not a semi-auto, it's a pump, so that's not even what you're looking for. Might have to do some homework. All right, let's get to number five. This is from... Ian, and Ian's from across the pond, so awesome. Great to have an international viewer. Uh, he has a question from his side of the pond from the UK, and he shoots a lot of airsoft and pellet guns, which is something, unfortunately, I don't have a ton of experience with. Which M17 CO2 hard air pistol has the facility to fit a red dot sight? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know, because I don't know if they're metal slides or plastic slides. Um, he sent a picture as well of some of his air guns, which look pretty cool. Um, I'm guessing due to their firearms laws, they can't own many real guns, so you have to, or they're severely restricted, so airsoft is the option, and you want to shoot red dot. I would try to find, uh, maybe check some of the airsoft forums. They would probably be the best source of information as far as milling. I know some of the airsoft sites are starting to do more and more replica of real steel guns, and I know I've seen some airsoft with, you know, 
red dot sites. So I'm not sure if slides are being milled or you have to maybe kind of have a threaded insert, but I would definitely reach out to some of the airsoft shops, the high-end airsoft shops. I know there's some in Japan that do amazing work. Like you look at some of their airsoft guns that are about $2,000 because they're all tricked out and that's the type of matches that they're able to do. So I would maybe check some of the airsoft forums, airsoft, airsoft groups and airsoft shops to see what your options are. Because unfortunately I don't have a direct uh, experience with that, but great question. Definitely a great question. This one is from Jacob, wanting to know where you can find a screw block. Um, give me one sec. The question on my how to shorten screws video, which again, I'll put a card up there if I can, but there's a limit on how many cards we can put up on a video. But I had these uh, little blocks, and basically what you can do is put a, uh, a screw in there, and then you can use this to hold it as you're shortening. And this is you know, one that is just of a couple screws, and this one has four, four, four six, and eight number eight, uh, four, six, and eight size screws that you can use. Uh, the part number on this one is H46274, and I've tried Googling this, and unfortunately I can't find them. If I do find a source, I will put links. Otherwise, I'll see if maybe somebody can carry them and try to go from there. But otherwise, you could have a basic machine shop. Anybody that had some basic taps make something like this for you. It's probably eighth inch piece of steel with just drilled and tapped holes, maybe yeah, reach out to a machine shop. But I'll do some more digging on these because they are super handy to have. I know I had an extra that I mailed out to a viewer a while ago, but I'm down to only a couple, so I can't really give these away. But I will look around and see what I can find. But this one's just called a gun screw thread gauge. And again, that part number made in China. But see if you can find something like this. I know I have seen them on eBay, but I couldn't find any recently. Before we get to our next question, let's go ahead and give a big thank you to Lucky Shot. Lucky Shot makes some very unique gifts and glassware, and a lot of it features actual safe rounds for that perfect conversation piece. So when you pick up the glass and you see that bullet going through there, you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. And it's great for yourself as a gift to the shooting enthusiast in your life, or maybe someone just to have a conversation. They have all sorts of cool gifts, glassware, and more on their webpage. Speaking of their webpage, go ahead and check out their webpage, do some shopping, and use the coupon code show it on the screen to save yourself some money during checkout. We really do appreciate using the code, plus it saves you money, and we appreciate Lucky Shot for supporting this month's episode of the QA by giving away one lucky question asker with a prize from Lucky Shot. Make sure you check them out, luckyshotusa.com, and we thank them for sponsoring this episode. And the Pineapple Fanta just tastes better with a Lucky Shot glassware. Man, seriously, Pineapple Fanta is so good. I don't have it very often, I'm trying to cut soda down, but I gotta say, when you have an ice cold Pineapple Fanta, my day just gets better. All right, Dave, I have two questions regarding a 10.5 shorty. Current build is a 10.5 gas port. He lists some specs. You know it's gonna be over gas, but it actually feels great. So just keep running it, man. Uh, it feels so good. First, ejection pattern is two o'clock with 55 grain. Should I play around with it or just leave it? Second, what area would you look for wear on a short build? Uh, wear is gonna be the cam pin track. That's gonna wear a little bit and then it's gonna stop. That's all right. Also check to make sure your lugs and your bolt uh, is wearing normally as it should as the carrier is also wearing and then check for any tilt issues stuff like that but usually with an sbr you're going to see that cam pin track maybe a little wear in the bolt and the extension so be cautious of that now if it's running fine technically could it be a little overgassed? it could but we also have to look for pattern as well as the ejection velocity making sure the carrier is traveling back at appropriate speed so that it's actually ejecting the round if it's just piddling out at three o'clock or 3.30, that's bad. We wanna make sure it has that good, consistent ejection path. Now, if everything's working good at two o'clock, I might be tempted just to leave it. Now, you could try a heavier buffer to try to slow it down a little bit and change that, but if it's running fine, I don't know what kind of ammo you're using. Uh, you say 55 grain. So if you're using like XM193 and it's ejecting at two o'clock, I might just run it because that's some hotter ammo. And if you use regular, you know, American Eagle or something like that, and it's more at that three to four o'clock, you're fine. Uh, however, you could put a heavier buffer in just to try it. But if it's running good, I'd be, I'd be tempted just to, just to keep rocking it, man. You could try an H2, but I think, I don't know. I would just keep rocking it or maybe put an H2 in just to try it. And then we talked about the wear stuff, but if it feels good, keep going. This one is from Jeff Jones, getting a Glock 19. What's the best red dot? Uh, my personal Glock 19 has a 509. And again, I just did the video, the state of the red dot handgun, where I talked about my daily carry stuff. Check that out. I linked to it earlier, so make sure you check that out. Uh, I love the CH PWS plates uh, versus the MOS 
factory plates. The MOS factory plates are just not that great of quality. Get a CH plate and then get it for the appropriate optic. Right now, I'm buying more and more, personally, Holosun 508s, 509s. RMR, SROs, those are all really, really nice as well. I like those. But honestly, what, what comes down to when I'm buying stuff, I'm buying these Holo Suns. They're super impressed. They have a lot of bang going, especially for night vision. If you're going to be shooting that, having the different reticle choices, it just gives you more contrast when you're looking through nods, which is awesome. Which, speaking of which, I do have some content coming up on night vision, which I'm super excited about, if you haven't heard. Hey, this is from Bob. Bob, you sent me some Pineapple Fanta in the past as well, so I appreciate that. I don't know if this is from you again or not. I don't think so, but I'll have to double check. But anyways, just purchased a CZ457 for competition shooting. Do you have any recommendations for a bipod? If you can swing the money, the uh, Atlas bipod is by far one of the best bipods you can get. However, they're not cheap. That being said, Depending on the type of stock, a Harris bipod is a great bipod. So if you can get about that six to nine inch bipod, that'll serve you really, really well for the majority of probably what you'll do. But the Harris uh, bipod is a little limited in the can. I thought I had an Atlas one around here. I just got done shooting a match today and I had a great time. But the uh, Harris is a little limited. So if you can get one that has the, the tilt into it a little bit, you might like that. But uh, Harris is a great bipod. They're relatively inexpensive. I would avoid some of the knockoff brands that are clones. I would just get a real Harris. Or if you can swing and get a B&T Atlas, I would get the CAL, the C-A-L, which is the, uh, I can't remember what it stands for. Uh, I probably should know this, but the CAL is the one I really like. And then I also have a super CAL for my big heavy semi-auto guns. But uh, I absolutely love those, but they're like 300 bucks. So they're not cheap. So Harris or B&T. Those would be the bipods I would get. And he says, as always, thank you for all you do. Thank you for what you do, making these kind comments. I really do appreciate it. This one is from Mitchell. I'm sorry, from Mitch. I apologize. It's okay. Is it okay to use a 9mm buffer in a 5.56 carbine? Recently picked up an H3 and a 9mm. They're both 5.5 ounces, but the 9 was $20 cheaper. Uh, depending on the type of 9mm, it probably would be okay. However, I'd be cautious to make sure that they are the same weight. Believe it or not, some of the pistol caliber carbine buffers out there are not buffers like an H3 where it has three tungsten weights. Some of them are powder filled. Some of them are more solid. Honestly, uh, it would be a best thing for you to do is just get the H3. It's $20, okay? I get that $20 might be a lot of cash right now, but eat ramen for a couple of meals and just get the H3. Uh, I know some guys do it, you know, they'll try to game it a little bit and try to reduce that recoil or whatever. So you're not the only one that's tried it. If you Google this, there are several messages. I remember seeing it in the Brian Eno's forum, which was a competition shooters forum. Uh, they've, they've done this before, try to do that. <clears throat> but honestly, I would just get the H3 or an H2 or better yet, save up and get a JP silent captured spring system. That's my favorite. Uh, so I hope that helps. But yeah, you're not going to break anything. It's not going to be unsafe unless it's just some weird, ridiculously heavy buffer. So make sure you check the weight on a scale, something like that. This one is from Anthony. And Anthony also asks about the screw block. I feel like I should probably give away these as a prize. This would probably be more valuable to some people, but uh, I'm going to, again, do some checking. I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> now, there was some other comments, emails, stuff that I've gotten uh, just basically checking in. Being that I am in Minnesota, we're not going to get into current events, uh, but just to let you know, I do appreciate you guys checking in. I'm good. I work in northern Minnesota. Uh, obviously things are affecting all of us around the country, all the current events, which we're not going to get into. That's not the point of this show, but I do appreciate you guys. Some of you guys just sending a quick message, checking in stuff like that. It does mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. We have some of the best viewers. I absolutely love our viewers. Rex and I are very lucky to have such a great pool of viewers and the QA is, as I've said before, even though it's not the most viewed series, you guys are like the inner circle. That being said, let's go ahead and pick our random numbers. We can give away our prize to this month's winner of the QA again, thanks to Lucky Shot. Our winner is number 10, which we will see who number 10 was. Number 10 was Mitch, uh, who asked about the buffer question. So Mitch, we'll go ahead and get in touch with you to get your shipping address, and we'll get that over to Lucky Shot and get you a prize. As always, the best way to get your question on the show is to send us an email. That email address is theqa at gunsandtactics.com. You can also leave comments. I try to engage. I know Rex does as well for his videos. We try to engage as much as possible with our viewers. Got some cool stuff coming up, especially if you're into the precision rifle stuff. I have a couple of first looks on some shotguns that I got to get 
and edit it out. So if you're looking for some shotgun info, a over-under and a semi-auto, which I'm looking forward to that. But the precision rifle, uh, next couple of videos precision rifle related, I'm actually really excited about. I'm not sure if it's gonna be one or two videos, but uh, came out really good. So I'll give you a little sneak peek right now you're watching, but it's pretty darn awesome. So that being said, I do appreciate you guys watching again, send those emails. If you like the content and you're new here, please like, share, and subscribe. I know most of you guys are regular subscribers, so spread the word, tell people to subscribe so we can grow and get bigger and cooler. And make sure you enjoy a, a little moment that you enjoy. And as someone said, Find your Wisconsin inside joke, you know who you are. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.